Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to answer questions involving free fall and terminal velocity. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 is a multiple choice question and it says the graph below shows how the vertical speed of a skydiver varies with time. A student uses information from the graph to make the following statements. Statement 1 says the acceleration of the skydiver is greatest between P and Q. Statement 2, the air resistance acting on the skydiver between Q and R is less than the weight of the skydiver. And statement 3, the forces acting on the skydiver are balanced between R and S. Which of these statements is or are correct? So we have 1 only, 2 only, 3 only, 1 and 2 only, or 1, 2 and 3. Well remember the way to tackle these kind of questions is to go through each statement and decide whether you think it's true or false. So the first statement, the acceleration of the skydiver is greatest between P and Q. Well if you notice on the speed time graph here between P and Q, we've got a straight horizontal line which means a constant vertical speed. So that means that the acceleration there is not going to be greatest between P and Q because that is actually just a constant speed that's happening there. So the greatest acceleration will be at this point here where the skydiver has just jumped out of the plane and is accelerating to begin with. So this would be the largest acceleration at this point here. So that one's got to be false, so I'll put a wee cross next to that. Statement 2, the air resistance acting on the skydiver between Q and R, so that's there to there, is less than the weight of the skydiver. Well you'll notice between Q and R we've got a rapid deceleration, we've got a decrease in speed, so that must mean that the air resistance upwards is actually bigger than the weight of the skydiver downwards. So that means that this one also has to be false, so I'll put a wee cross next to that. And lastly, the forces acting on the skydiver are balanced between R and S. Well, between R and S, that is actually going to be our second terminal velocity when the two forces acting on the skydiver are balanced. So this is indeed balanced forces here, so this one is true. So this means that our answer is 3 only, which is C. Question 2 says that a parachutist jumps out of an aircraft. Sometime later, the parachute is opened. The graph shows the motion of the parachutist from leaving the aircraft until landing. you notice this is the exact same shape of graph that we just had in question 1. And part A says which two parts in the graph show when the forces acting on the parachutist are balanced. So this is kind of based on part B from question 1 just there. Well you should know that the two instances of balanced forces are going to occur when the parachutist has reached terminal velocity. So between B and C is our first terminal velocity and between D and E is our second terminal velocity. So we've got constant speed and constant speed, so our two parts are from B to C and from D to E. Part B says to sketch a free body diagram of the parachutist when they reach terminal velocity. Remember to label the forces. So we're going to assume this is the first terminal velocity, so here's our parachutist, our skydiver, and we can label our forces. So our force up the way is going to be air resistance or drag, and the force balancing that down the way is going to be the weight due to the skydiver. Part C says that the parachutist lands badly and is airlifted to hospital by helicopter. The stretcher and parachutist have a total mass of 90.0 kilograms. Part 1 says to calculate the combined weight of the stretcher and parachutist. So this is quite a straightforward W equals mg calculation. So we're going to write down what we know. We're trying to find the weight. We know that the mass is 90.0 kilograms and g on earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So writing down our equation we have W equals mg. Putting in the numbers we have 90.0 times 9.8. And if you put that into your calculator, we should get an answer of 882 newtons. Lastly, part 2 says that the helicopter cable provides an upward force of 958.5 newtons to lift the stretcher and parachutist. Calculate the acceleration of the stretcher and parachutist. Well, we're given an upward force in this question and we've just calculated the combined weight downwards. So we firstly have to work out what the unbalanced force is going to be and then we can use Newton's second law to work out what the acceleration is going to be. So writing down our unbalanced force first we have F equals 958.5 minus 882 which equals 76.5 newtons and that's going to be acting up the way. So then writing down what we know from the question we're trying to find acceleration. We know the unbalanced force F is 76.5 newtons and our mass is 90.0 kilograms. Remember combined mass. We then write down Newton's second law so we have F equals MA. We can rearrange for A this time, so we have A equals F over M. Substituting in the numbers, we have 76.5 divided by 90.0, which is going to give us an answer less than 1. So putting that into your calculator is equal to 0 0.85 meters per second squared. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.
Whoa.